as almost a different species, you know, and you know, that's not, not the way to go for any society. No, she told me she wouldn't know what life would be like to be thinking normal, thinking straight. Are they going to get me a gaff? No. Are they going to get me off the streets? No. There's going to be another number. How do I cope with this? Who do I go to? There are currently 5,000 people registered as homeless in Ireland. Two to three hundred of these are sleeping rough. We wanted to find out why, in the 21st century, there are still people without a home. Due to the sensitive nature of the programme, some people could not appear on camera. We created a reconstruction to give those people a voice. I got thrown out me gaff by me dad. When was this? About two years ago. And what happened? I was hanging around with a lot of lads and my dad didn't appear when he fucked me out. Do you still hang around with them now? Not really, no. Where do you live? On the streets. Got nowhere. I'm in Beach House at the minute in Amy Tree, but from tomorrow I'll be on the streets, back on the streets. And why are you back on the streets again? Because me and my fella are finishing after 14 years. PPS number. Now, there's like a vicious cycle there, so that's one of the reasons uh, I'm homeless. In fact, that's the whole reason I'm homeless, is because without a PPS number, you can't get welfare, you can't get a flat, you can't get a job, you know, and I don't have my passport now, because I used to be in the army, so it's confiscated. Yeah, I'm being a bit screwed over, to be honest. I was four years in prison. Seven years, I got a seven year sentence for a robbery. I then I spent most of that in the jury, where uh, the judge was easily available to get. Alcoholics or drug addicts, most of them, 90% of them. When you get the odd person that might, might have got separated, lost his job, and he wouldn't be on anything or she wouldn't be on anything, just sleeping in doorways. Whether it's a social addiction or uh, a marriage breakdown, or just through loneliness, find themselves uh, on the wrong side of the fence and need help. You know, the, the, the number of people who are actually say, sleeping rough is relatively small. Like, it's very sad that there's anybody sleeping rough, but the numbers wouldn't be absolutely massive, you know. But the, the issues around that are people slip through the net, but the safety nets, which are really to do with health and maybe to do with justice in, in relation to the prison system, just aren't active, you know, aren't working. Our investigation led us to meet with representatives of different organisations that are in place to tackle the problem of homelessness in Ireland. We wanted to find out exactly what they were doing to help the situation and these vulnerable people. We have uh, just actually across the road from here uh, a specialist hostel that uh, gets people in off the street who are active drug users and works with them to, you know, basically. A primarily keep them alive in the first place but try and bring them from that place they are there onto a more stable environment and off drugs and into accommodation. We go out every Monday and with soup, sandwiches, noodles, clothes, hats, scarves, gloves, you know anything that we that they need we try to supply them with. It's hustles in town that cheap like but I might let you in during the morning and all for a shower, but that's about it. And what are the hostels like? It's grand, like, they're not, they're not like home. Some of them have TVs and all, and you get to bed, but it's more about just getting a shower. It's hard to keep clean, like, you know, wet and all. If you were sleeping rough, where would you go in Dublin? Like, I, I, I felt safe down the corporation buildings. Oh, yeah. Because at the front of the corporation buildings, there's a bush before the window. So you could get out of the bush, like, so the snow would be beside the window, and then nobody knows you're there. People prefer to sleep on the streets. Yeah. And why would you say that is? Well, well, maybe safety thing. There's a lot of uh, drug use goes on in, in hostels. And, so if a person wasn't a drug addict, they wouldn't want to be going into that environment. They'd rather sleep in a doorway or up an alleyway where there's nobody there, you know, where to be safe. They seem to be closing down a lot of the places. They're closing down Cedar House on 31st of March. That's where a lot of homeless people would sleep. And they seem to be closing more and more of them down, which I think is a bad thing. 
During the making of this documentary, it came to our attention that drugs can play a vital role in the reason why these people still have no homes. So they, if they were homeless, they were going into emergency hostels and, you know, where there'd be drugs and that, so they might be go back on the gear. And again, you might be familiar with that if you've been a hard uh, addict and then you go back to take the amount that you did before, it can kill you because your body's clean of it. And I went up to Thomas Street and I was just questioning in my head what I was doing up here, you know? And I ended up getting the bag again. And I remember back then, I was sitting in my flat and I, uh, I cried for seven hours. Will I want it? Will I just flush it? And I had a little baby at the time. So I was ashamed of myself. Kids on the street, 18, 19, there's one girl we met and she she doesn't remember ever being in sobriety. You know, she doesn't she wouldn't know. She told me she wouldn't know what life would be like to be thinking normal, thinking straight. She's completely messed up. Yeah. Completely wasted life. I'm old enough now to get me met so. I'm on weekly, so I'm going to collect a weekly script. Okay. But I have a chest infection, a kidney infection, which I shouldn't be sitting down. And I'm three and a half months pregnant, and I'm in the hospital at the moment. Not into any hard life, but people assume you are, so they don't give you money half the time. Just presume you're on gear. Were you ever on gear? No. There is no obvious solution to the problem that is homelessness in Ireland, as each case is unique. However, there is help out there. It's just up to the individual to want to be helped. Like no one wants to be on the you know line on the street out of their head and drugs, you know. Uh, they they but they need kind of support to get out of that situation. Feeling excited over a game of football. I know it doesn't sound much, but like feeling and way trained and uh, I went back to school and I got me junior said. Yeah, I'd be getting weighed down. I'd have to go from 100 mils to 60, 40 mils. I'd be down to 20 on Wednesday. And then on, well, on five months, I'd be down to zero. After you get a PPS number, then, uh, then it's not so bad, you know? Then I can try and apply for a job or at least try for welfare. It's not about the soup, the sandwiches, it's about there's somebody there that loves them and cares immensely for them. And we try to feed that to them, get them to understand that there's hope and help. So it's all like you have to take up yeah. the initiative to get away from the circumstances that you're in. Nothing is certain. I could be talking today as a CEO. There's nothing to say that in a year's time I might need accommodation.